So today I'm going to show you basic microphone setup and I'm going to give you some professional recording tips that you can start using straight away. Don't go anywhere. Hi there guys and welcome to topic number three of this video series, the seven key elements of music production. Now that we've been introduced to the software that we'll be using and the basic equipment that we'll be using to get started, we're going to look at microphones and recording. Now I'm going to teach you the basics of recording professional quality audio and this still applies if you want to make electronic music because you're likely to need to record vocals for your tracks. Now we're going to go through basic microphone and recording setup and I'm going to show you on camera how to set that up as well. I'm going to show you what bits of equipment are used for what and I'm also going to take you through the two main types of microphone that are used in recording. And just to top it off, I'm going to give you some really easy to apply professional recording techniques that are going to get you great quality recordings from the start. Now the basic stuff that you're going to need to get started recording audio is a microphone, a microphone stand, an XLR cable, an audio interface, and a computer with a bit of recording software on it, just like Ableton on that computer there. Now it's possible to buy these in sets and that's what I'd recommend doing. And the set that I recommended in the previous video is perfect for getting up and running. So I'll link that up in the description below. Now I'm gonna show you how to hook up all of that equipment and get ready to record. So let's show you how to get everything hooked up and ready to record. We're gonna start with the microphone. Now the microphone has an XLR output and a little socket on the bottom just there. Using an XLR cable, you're going to plug into the bottom of the microphone, just like this. Now the other end of your XLR then goes into the audio interface. And we're going to go into input 1. Your interface is then connected to your computer by either USB, Firewire or Thunderbolt. Mine is USB. Now once your microphone is plugged into your interface and your interface is plugged into your computer, you're almost ready to go. The last thing that we need to do is plug our headphones or speakers into the interface so that we can hear what we're recording and then hear it afterwards as well. So on the front of the interface, there's a little headphone slot just here and a headphone dial just there. Now this, like many others, is a quarter inch headphone jack. So standard headphones like iPod headphones aren't gonna fit in that. However, for a couple of pounds on Amazon, you can get an adapter that makes them fit. So I'll take an adapter from this size to this size and that then into the front of your interface there. If you're using studio monitors, then they're gonna be connected to the back of the interface through these slots just here. It's really important to remember that if you don't have anything plugged into the headphone slot or the back, you're not gonna hear anything. So let's jump into Ableton Live and show you how to get audio coming from your microphone through into Ableton. Now that we've got that mic set up, let's have a look at how we get sound from the mic into Ableton. And in the description below, there's a link to the free trial of Ableton if you haven't got it already. So feel free to download that and work along with exactly what we're doing in the video. Now, firstly, what you're gonna to need to do is tell Ableton where it needs to look to get the sound from your microphone. And in order to do that, you set your audio interface as the audio input and output device. We do that by coming up here and coming to preferences. And in the audio tab just here, your computer will automatically select uh, the built-in microphone and the built-in speakers. We need to change that to what my interface is called, which is the Scarlett 2i2 USB. Now, we need to make an audio track to record onto. In Ableton, as default when you open up a new project, two MIDI tracks and two audio tracks already exist. Just need to bear in mind that if you're not using Ableton and you're using something like Logic or Cubase, they don't automatically make audio tracks for you, so you might need to make one. Now the next thing that we need to do is tell that audio track where it's going to be receiving microphone input from. Now, as you saw in the video, 
I plugged my microphone into input 1 on my interface. So let's use this audio track and the place that you select the audio input is where you see audio from just here and this drop down menu is all the inputs from my interface. Now it's a two input interface and we're in input number one so we can keep that there. Now to get this audio track ready to record now that we've selected the input we need to turn it on by clicking auto just here and we need to hit record arm or record enable and what this does is it tells the track that when we hit record just up here that this track should be recording audio. So I'm now talking into my microphone and you can see that coming through into Ableton just here. Now it's important to remember that inside Ableton there's two different places to record. This first view that we're on just here is where you can sort of make, store and try out little building blocks for your songs. So what we can do in an empty clip slot up here is record a clip of audio by hitting just here. So this is going to be a little building block of audio that we can use in the next view to start recording our songs. So this is going to be a little building block of audio that we can use in the next view to start recording our songs. Now if we go into the second view in Ableton, which is just up here, the second place that we're able to record audio is directly onto these audio tracks, just here. So to activate this section, just press this button up here, let's get rid of these for a little bit more space. And what I can do is record audio directly onto the audio track here. So let's put that back to the start. Same thing again, hit record ready on this track and it's receiving input number one and it's receiving volume when I talk into the microphone just like that. Now if I hit record you can see my voice recording onto this audio track just here. Now as I mentioned these two recordings are totally separate so if I play this back just here you can see my voice recording onto this audio track. That's what we hear there. And then if we go back to the other view, so this is gonna be a little building block of audio that we can use in the next view to start recording our songs. I can play the first recording that I did. Now it's really important that you don't come above this level here when you're recording. If you come into here and the microphone signal goes red, then you've clipped your signal or distorted your signal. And that basically means it's gonna sound really horrible when you listen back to it, and it's something that you really want to avoid. So the two types of microphone that are most commonly used in studio recording are dynamic microphones and condenser microphones. So, dynamic microphones are ones that you typically see the singer of a live concert or gig using, so you've probably seen one before. In the studio, they're used to record things that are loud and don't contain much detail. And by that I mean something like drums, which are boomy and loud and don't have much high frequency detail, as opposed to something like a violin or a female vocal. So in essence, dynamic mics are really good at recording loud, low frequencies. They're also used in live gigs, like I say, because they're very robust, and when the singer's on a very loud stage, the mic only picks up what's within six inches of the front of the microphone, so it's not very sensitive. If every microphone on the stage was picking up every single instrument, it would be a big blur and it would be really quite unpleasant to listen to. Condenser microphones, on the other hand, are seen much less in live gigs. These microphones are commonly used in studios to record vocals, acoustic guitars, violins, etc. Out of the two, you'd definitely rather drop a dynamic microphone. A condenser might not fare as well because they're a little bit more delicate. Also, they require a power source. The power that you need to run a condenser microphone is delivered down the cable that you plug the microphone into the audio interface with. You'll see a button on the interface labeled 48V or 48 volts. Now this is referred to as phantom power. And in order for you to get any sound through a condenser microphone, you have to have this turned on. Now I hope that's given you a good foundation in recording audio and it's a really important skill for all producers in all genres so make sure you really grasp what we went through in that video.
And if you've got any questions, feel free to get in touch via Facebook, email, or here on YouTube. Now, while trying to learn music production, I'd recommend getting a friend involved with you as well. It's a really good way to stay motivated, someone to bounce ideas off and really learn with. Now, if it's your first time here or you haven't done so already, then I would love to have you subscribe so I can keep you in the loop about what we're doing here to help you learn music production from the ground up. I thank you very much for spending a little bit of time with me. In the next video, we're going to go on to music theory and why it's not important to know it if you want to start making your own music. And that might sound a bit bizarre, but trust me, in the next video all will become clear. So I'll see you there.